Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. You ever uh, see a device and you're like, what is that? And it just kind of trips you out and you're like, wait a minute, that looks like something uh, that's familiar, but it's in a different form factor. It's in a different uh, package that I've never seen before. And it's got a different clinical use than what I imagined. So uh, this is the VisiMobile, which is a deployable like telemetry monitor for continuous monitoring, monitoring of a patient. I can't even talk today. I've only slept a couple hours last night. But guys, uh, so if you imagine, it's a tiny little screen and all those parameters go over to a central monitoring station, just kind of like, um, like a telemetry system, but there's more parameters than the typical telemetry. And at the same time, um, it, it has some predictive natures that allow you to better handle your patient loads and establish priorities and stuff. And to, uh, I'm dying, guys. I'm, I'm dying. I'm, I'm, I'm desatting, so <laughs> I'm talking too much. But anyway, uh, joining me is Brittany. Uh, <laughs> Jesus thing. Brittany from Soterra. She drove all the way up here to the North Central Biomed Association to come up here and show me this cool new piece of medical tech that is annoying me at the moment. So, <laughs> so let's go ahead and flip it over to Brittany and let's find out what this thing is and what it does and why, it's, why does it say I'm dying? Why does it say I'm dying? I'm not dying. Oh, there it goes. It, oh, whew. there it goes. My respiration rate's back to normal. Thank God. Oh, demo mode. Okay, so Brittany, let's go ahead and do this. All right, Brittany, so uh, tell us about this uh, Vizzy Mobile because it's something, it's, it's tiny. First off, I mean, look at next to the, is that an iPhone? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. So you can see the size uh, compared to the iPhone, and it is very small. And so, Brittany, what is this, uh, and what is it for, man? Uh, so it can be used anywhere outside of the ICU. Okay. It's continuous monitoring, just as you mentioned. Um, continuous non-invasive blood pressure. So you'll actually take a one-time measurement of your blood pressure, utilizing a blood pressure cuff. Okay. And then you can remove the blood pressure cuff and you've got continuous non invasive blood pressure. Um, also, it'll continuously monitor all of your core vitals. So heart rate, pulse rate, respiration, okay. SPO2, skin temp, things of that nature, patient posture, uh, okay. fault detection, prevention, and then... Uh, so I'm like, patients. you know, so for normal traditional uh, telemetry modules, they normally don't do NIBP because it, it, it's serious hit on the battery life. So you guys say that you can take one NIBP and that gives you a baseline. And based on the changes of those parameters is how it can tell you the changes of your patient numerics. Look at that. Yep. It's actually got a nice little display. It's tiny, but all of that comes over to your central monitoring station where you can see all those parameters live. And it's it's got some interesting things here. So Brittany, what's going on? I see a patient laying down, sitting yep. there. That's so what's going on? Positioning. Okay. So there's three accelerometers, one in the wrist device, the busy device itself. Okay. And then one in the arm sensor that you'll wear and one in the chest sensor. And it's okay. either three liter five. And that's how it detects the patient positioning. Um, and it can know if you're up, up and walking around or if you have turned or if you need to turn things in that nature. Okay. So it, it helps you with your patient care by uh, telling them when they need to turn. But it also uh, does fall protection, right? Because, I mean, if the patient's yeah. moving around and stuff, the accelerometers will detect a trend. So so it doesn't predict a fall. Okay. You can just see on the monitor that the patient is up and They're starting to move, around. right? Yes. Whereas so normally we're, we rely on uh, bed cells, like the, the load cells. Yeah. Um, this one here, actually, the, the patient doesn't need to be in their bed. They could be sitting in a chair, which is healthy because it reduces bed sores. And you can still yes. detect when they're trying to get up themselves, which normally we don't have that capability. You know, interesting. Yeah. Definitely a cool little piece of tech. So there it is. It attaches. You can see the sensors. So the sensors are technically like a consumable. They eventually get replaced. And there's going to be accelerometers here, here, and here. And those accelerometers tell it what the patient's doing. I think it's very cool because this is a tech that a lot of different companies are trying to come up with a solution for which is uh, figuring out when a patient should be moved. Because if you leave them in the same position over a period of time, they will develop bed sores and their patient care will be prolonged. So we're always trying to do um, standard of care improvements. And this is how they're going to do it is by 
actively, constantly monitoring a patient. And you can designate a high risk patient, right, on that on that system? Yeah, you can set your parameters however you need to for each individualized patient. That'll be done, I believe, at the remote viewing display. Okay. So, and then you can go um, in terms of waveform review, you can look at the risk device. So you'll right. just tap. There it is. So you'll just tap on these little boxes. So there's the heart rate and you can see the, the waveform right there. And yep. you can actually um, also uh, view that at the at the central station as well, and obviously it'll be bigger. So if I touch a numeric, does it blow it up bigger so I, it gives me more detail? Or N not not here. not here. That's where you would have to do it at the central station, and then you have forty eight hour waveform review. So that I can see it's in a little bit of a protective case. Can you remove it from the case for me, please? Sure can, of course. So one of the most impressive things about it is that the entire device is like hermetically sealed. I don't see any fasteners on how to access the insides of it. So that's going to prevent fluid intrusion. It's going to remain your uh, IPX rating, which is, you know, its ability to withstand fluids. But at the same time, the, the terminals are nice and clear and they're out in the open. So if you have to clean them or if you detect that, hey, they're starting to corrode, it's not hidden. Like it's right there out in the open, but it's extremely lightweight. What's the battery life on this guy? Do you know? I, I want to say 12 or 13 hours. Really? It's supposed to go. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And we're working on longer battery life as well. So. That's actually a really high resolution screen because the, uh, you can see the ECG uh, readout right there. There's a lot of detail there. I thought it was just like a, a moving display showing you, Hey, I'm receiving something, but yeah. that's actual, that's URS complex. That's, you can actually really see the detail in there. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And we can see it's on lead two, according to the demo. And we can switch all the different leads configurations from this device. That's so cool. That's very cool. So it operates off of Wi-Fi, transmits over your hospital's Wi-Fi network, and goes back to a central monitoring station. And that's how you manage your workload. And I see an app. What's the app? Uh, so currently, we're not really focusing on that right now. We're kind of okay. trying to revamp that. But it will go directly to your EHR as well. You just do a one-click validation. That's interesting. So, yeah. And then all this information is updated every three seconds based on a 60 second average. Okay. So. And, and do you have a uh, business card so that we can uh, make sure that everybody has your contact info? Because this is this is a cool piece of tech. Yeah. I've never seen it before. Very happy that you brought it to my attention. Because I have never even seen videos or stills of it. And I'm usually staying ahead of the times a little bit better. I guess one of the best things is you're not constantly taking the NIBP ratings, yes. which is actually one of the leading factors for why hospitals are getting downgraded on their patient satisfactory scores is because NIBP is constantly squishing the hell out of their arm. And uh, it's either bruising the arm and or it's preventing them from sleeping at night. They'll write you and, you know, your patient satisfactory scores affects you as a hospital. That's right. I, I, I will get Brittany's information. I will go ahead and put it in the video. Go, <laughs> if that helps. I'll put it in the video description, her actual contact info. And if anything, uh, nice. I reached out to her on LinkedIn and that's how we found each other. So I will leave a link to her, her LinkedIn. So if you want more information, contact her on there and uh, go ahead and write her a message and tell her that you want to see a demo because that is pretty cool tech. All right. Well, thank you very much. I thank appreciate you. it. And guys, thank you very much for your time. Hope you learned something uh, that tech is getting smaller. It's getting better. And uh, I would say that this is a huge improvement on the form factor because currently uh, telemetry modules, either they burn through the alkaline batteries or, you know, they have a lot of recesses where cables interconnect to them and those recesses corrode because fluid intrusion. It just it, it has too many defects. We've been doing things too wrong for too long. It's refreshing to see a new product with a new approach to patient care. Anyway, guys, that's the Visi Mobile. Thanks for bringing it by.